Hey guys, here we are into the final matches of the night. We have on the blue side, Jackson, I think it's Jackson High School. And Jackson on... High School versus South San Francisco High School versus Excellent. South San Fran because it's a lot shorter. South San Fran, South San Fran. Stop, 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 stop. So, welcome back guys. High School Solo League of Legends Season 1, getting first day of the Season 1 tournament here. Um, there's going to be two games for this match. Every match is two games until uh, playoffs, of course. Mm -hmm. And how this works, it's like OGN style. You get sticker points for the games that you win. If a team, if the match goes one to one, both teams get one point. If the match goes two to zero, the team that went two zero gets three points. And we are underway with these picks and bans. So Jackson High School banning out Shen Thresh and Vi. South San Fran High School banning out Lee Sin Jarvan and Vane. Yeah, some really strong bands there. I mean, Shem, that global pressure with Stan United is very, very good. Thresh, a good support. It's got a lot of damage and CC in that bot lane, and really not someone you want to face up against. So, we see the Elise pick up being the first pick, and Elise actually gets banned quite a lot at this sort of higher yeah. level of play, so not really that much of a surprise there. So, Sejuani is a bit of a surprise, though. What do you think of that? Sejuani so pick up is really, really interesting. It's a really team fight oriented but the thing is with Sejuani is that you know, she's like a team fight jungler but there's just so many more champions that can kind of do what she does yeah you no know, like Zach has a longer gap closer he has more sustain he's more tanky and he has more CC coming off he wasn't even banned on Jarvan as well has a longer gap closer has a cataclysm can go a lot tankier and can get can give his team like a uh, like a, a taxi buff and things like that they are going to be picking up a Malphite there, so some nice AoE CC coming in for these guys. They can definitely combo off their ultimates. And we're actually seeing Corky and Sona being covered over. Corky, of course, one of those highly, or the newly, new, newly found highly contested AD, carries, yeah. AD carry pickups. And um, he's just a strong pickup with the Trinity Force buffs. Yeah, I really wouldn't be surprised to see this Corky Sona locked in. It's a really strong bot lane. You've got the sustain and the damage coming out from Sona. And you can use her crescendo in later fights as well. And then Corky, just so strong at the moment, especially with the uh, Triforce changes, as you said. So, uh, Malphite pickup on this uh, red side is quite an interesting pickup. Not that commonly seen these days. Can be played mid or jungle or top lane. Usually seen in the top lane, though, building into sort of an armor sort of specs and getting a lot of armor items, being able to lock down the AD carries of the other team. Also, some of his damage does scale off his armor as well. So, quite nice mm -hmm. for Malphite. We see Ezreal and Zyra being hovered over here. Uh, Ezreal, nice against Corky because he's got that mobility and can use the Mystic Shot to get a bit of damage down, but Corky can just stand in minions and you can't really hit a Mystic Shot on someone who is standing behind minions. So it yeah. be interesting to see how that lane goes if these are locked in. It's going to be locked in there. Some more nice team fight champions coming off. I mean, I would be... I would expect to see, like, Oriana maybe picked up for the AP carry pick. Mm -hmm. Really good team fighting. AP middle. You can always go, you know, some assassin AP mid. Yeah. Um, Ari would work too, things like that. Just kind of like the more popular AP middles. Like maybe even like Lissandra for some more AoE. But they are building up this AoE team. They also have quite a bit of tankiness in the form of Malphite and Sejuani. And it looks like Cassidy and Olaf are going to be hovered over here. Olaf pick would be pretty surprising. Cassidy not as much. Um, so Cassidy pick really strong right now because, or pretty strong overall. I think th think since forever Cassidy pick has been pretty good, especially on those people that can really play Cassidy, very assassin based uh, AP carry, AP mid laner. 
Really good at roaming, and yeah, that's the switch. The last minute switch from Olaf to Renekton. I think a little bit more standard to pick up that Renekton for a very, very nice tanky front line. So, Team Comfort Jackson High School, very well run, and actually, Talon is locked in for South San Fran High School. Oh, uh, Talon's commonly is... seen as a counter to Cassidy, but yeah. I don't really think he works as well as a lot of people seem to think he does, especially since, unless you know how to play him very well, you're probably going to lose your lane just because yeah. he's very difficult to play, and he does take a lot of practice, and... I mean, he's if I, I I don't know maybe Siori is very very good on this talent and knows how to play him very well but usually you see people picking him just because he's a counter Cassidy not realizing that he yeah. takes a lot of skill to play. I think the issue with Talon versus Cass and is the fact that I feel like Talon scales not as, scales not as well mm -hmm. into the lake him as Cassidy would. Talon's a, like all eighty casters you know like Pantheon. Like Kha'Zix. Yeah. It's not 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 even not, not like Zed. Zed's different, but like them, it's it's a lot about early game. Like you have to do super well in that early game, and otherwise you just won't be able to do anything when it comes to late game. That's probably gonna be the basis I think about this this whole match is Siori is that he needs to do really well early game, and then he can scale into the late game with the rest of his team here. Otherwise, I think just Kasten's going to end up out damaging him. Yeah, Kasten does have that roam potential as well, really allowing him to get around the map with the Rift Walk. And the fact that he's gone for this teleport as well, I'm expecting to see some sort of early-ish teleport ganks going on. We saw it uh, the other day, actually. Uh, I think Xpeke used a, a teleport gank on day four of the Worlds. He was playing Ari at the time and got a double kill and helped him snowball his lane into a winning lane. So... I wouldn't be surprised God here, teleporting into another lane, probably bot lane early-ish on, if they have that pink ward in the second bottom version, should be able to get him a bit of early damage, uh, and hopefully a couple of early kills. So it's not 100% guaranteed, but the fact that the caster can roam a lot easier than Talon can will make that mid lane difficult here for Siori. Yes, indeed, and um, of course he is a bit of aggressive Aggression potential, kill potential on Cassidy when you go for that teleport over ignite. So he might be wanting to go for a little bit less of a not as aggressive lane. Of course, um, if this if Siori's you know a strong talent player, then he will definitely have to be a little bit more defensive on this Cassidy here. However, we'll have to see how it goes. I really like Elise in the jungle, which is a really solid jungle pick. I'll mm -hmm. be interested. Just to see if she if she goes like the complexity route that um complexity is generally which she's name I'm totally blanking out on goes with the um is it a lot of mortis I think it's a lot of mortis going with like the the Dwayne's blade start like on the least you know no I'm yeah saying? I mean it, it's it's strong it gives you some extra damage on your spidlings as well and does help you sort of clear the jungle a bit quicker but most junglers uh, if you jungle at least tend to go for that hunter's machete. Getting yeah. the uh, extra damage to minions down in that map means that you can build into a, a spirit of the Spectral Wraith or uh, a spirit of the actual Golem if you decide to go a bit more tanky. That is one problem I see here from the blue side, uh, the Jackson High School side. They don't really have an out and out tank. Yes, Renekton can build very tanky if you get that Dominus down, if you've got a Sunfire Cape or something like that as well. It does let you be quite tanky, but you can also build him very AD based and so I'd be interested to see if they yeah. decide to make him their sort of their tank and accept the fact that he's probably not going to be Malphite in lane then or if they go for a sort of an Elise tank and Renekton goes Brutalizer into uh, a Black Cleaver or something like that to just to melt down the uh, the Malphite when he jumps on his team. So going to get into this game now last match for today I believe we'll be having more matches tomorrow, starting up at, um, hold on. Starting at some time PST. <laughs> I think, oh, I totally told somebody this, and I completely forgot. Starting at 7 p.m. PST tomorrow, so starting pretty much right now would be the matches for tomorrow for HSL. And yeah, guys, definitely would be nice if you could come and tune in once again to see some more exciting matches uh, between the high schoolers and high schoolers as now to the loading screen here and once again I'm just I'm really interested to see how Siori will be doing on Talon because I do think this game 
going to be very much, or the chances for his team is going to be very much on how well he did. I'm going to check his wins and losses. He actually has, okay, well, he's actually 15 to 5 wins and losses for talent and rank, which puts him at a 75% win rate, so mm -hmm. he's done pretty well. Yeah, I mean, you never know how it's going to go down until uh, you actually see the game. He has got that Crimson Elite Talon skill, so obviously he is pro, because you can't get a skin unless you're pro on that champion, so. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes, and I think it's going to be a lot about jungle pressure, and a lot about how Kastin uses that teleport to roam around as well. I, I don't... I foresee it going well, but you never know. Like you can do really bad teleport ganks as well, and just not be able to use it to advantage. And then Sayori will get that chance to push up the lane and uh, manage to deny casting a lot of CS. And that's what he's going to be trying to do early as well, trying to get that harass down uh, using his <coughs> rake and uh, stopping casting and being able to farm as well as he would like to. So it's probably going to be a relatively low farm mid lane. Although both of these players are very very high level of, uh, of a skill cap so they might be able to farm just as well on melee champions as they are on the uh, ranged mid laners that we commonly see so so it's going to take quite a while so this game really interesting teams coming out I mean they have the assassination potential they also have the Q Shin 5 potential coming off for both of these teams, really. I mean, they both have some nice AoE. They have assassins as well into this game, mm -hmm. casting the least talent on the other side of things. That's interesting. Um, so, starts coming off. Looks like Sand starts Malphite signing off a dual and shield. Casting actually signing off a dual and shield. Really going, obviously, extreme defensive against his talent. Um, looks like all supports going to be going for those all consumables, but actually, fight pork chops. Picked up two sight wards, or uh, three sight wards and two vision wards here, and actually didn't have anything else. Didn't have like the support mastery gold. Didn't have the biscuit or the or the sixty second ward coming in. So he actually went six twenty one and three for her mastery. So it's a really interesting mastery coming out from Sona. Yeah, As looks like there's a snare gonna be coming off. Doesn't hit into anybody, but the ram does land. Exhaust goes on to V zero here. Made in the bay has to back out. He's very low, and both these teams didn't really have too much CC potential except for that Zyra name, which just, of course, not hit anybody. So that's going to be that team fight, I guess. You know, some some people just kind of hitting each other and then walking away. Uh, no summon is used. No, the exhaust was used by Fried Port Shop, so it okay. gives V Zero oh, yeah, and Made in the Bay the opportunity in that bot lane to get some early damage down if they can manage oh, yeah. to poke out Kentus and fried pork chops they might be able to uh, engage with that exhaust managing to uh, pick up an early kill uh, it'll be interesting to see if they do do that I mean, Sona, Ezri uh, Sona Corky is a really strong early lane especially with the sustain from the aria of perseverance but if they can get enough damage down hit that exhaust at the right time they will be able to pick up that kill yep, so see blue buff start to both of these junglers here and pretty much sanitized for everybody here and um I mean with that early start a little bit interesting coming up of course as you said the exhaust will be down and you know in these lanes where would you expect like the the most aggression to come out of uh, I think it's, as I said, I think if Ezreal and uh, Zyra can put enough aggression down early, they should be able to win that lane out now that they haven't got the exhaust, and I expect that to be where most of the aggression comes out. I mean, Cassidy and Talon are going to trade. I think uh, Sayori will try and be aggressive on that Talon because it does counter out Cassidy. You do get the extra damage, you got the rake as well, which does uh, the, uh, a not AoE, but the three uh, layers of damage as well, so... I expect there to be aggression in mid lane and in bot lane. I expect a lot more in bot lane at the moment, especially since they've hit level 2 oh, first. Oh yeah, the snare does go down, Ian, from V0 here. Auto attack's coming off, Kent is extremely low. And as well as fried pork chops and V0. However, Here comes actually, the least, though. is coming in from the side. The cocoon does not land, the snare does land. There is the repel up, flash, as well as barrier from V0 to get out. Kent is still hanging around, but extremely low here. 
He doesn't have barrier or flash and he decides to go aggressive. But actually made the bay will be stunned out by this cocoon exhaust actually going out to him. There's a set of landing on two flash away from five pork chops as well as shorter ace B0. All the Q all the slants into five pork chops, but not quite able to make contact. And we talked about it, that was the counter exhaust. They almost managed to pick up the kills there because they had that summoner spell that wasn't on the other side. We see because of that illusions, the uh, Sejuani here for the red team is able to go around and counter jungle knowing that Elise has had to go back and isn't going to be bothering her anytime soon. Yes, indeed. So, early damage coming down. And actually, it should be still hanging around this bottom lane. It's been quite a bit of time here. Meanwhile, Midland actually trades coming off here. Siori looks like taking a little bit more damage, I think. And he does have Lotus, actually. actually. Level 4 gank on wow. the mid lane from the top lane. This is going to be really interesting. Here he comes, yep, going in. He's got damage. Slice and Dice up. Yeah, he's going to be able to get the first dash, have a flash away from Siori. So I'm not quite able to get that gank going. But he is still quite ahead in CS compared to this Malphite. Alright, it's one problem with Renekton is that you are able just to be... Um, uh, so one problem with Malphite is that you are able to be harassed down a little bit, especially if you decide to go for that sort of tankier build. He's gone, he's got 4 AP, so he's been quite tanky. He's got 52 armor as well. and you, Your clear is okay, but you're very mana dependent, especially with that ground slam, which just really use up your mana bar. We see Siori taking the Cassadin down quite low there in the middle lane. And then next is going to engage here onto the top lane with yeah. Jessica Reyes. Knight does advantage. go down, slice and dice not into both these champions. They're both getting so <gasps> first blood for Majestic Eraser. And he's able to lift through the Ignite. I think that was a lot of those creeps coming into play there. And wow. Yeah, um, the, the beautiful thing that uh, Majestic Eraser managed to do there was he flashed away and preempted flash from uh, the Renekton, from Blowfish, and used his ground stamp as the flash was in the air, so to speak, so as he was untargetable, which meant that when he became targetable, he got the damage from the ground slam at the casting time of about, I think it's like 0.12 seconds or something, it's very short, but managed to get that damage down and kept himself alive while getting the kill, so really well done by him there. Yeah, just so close to going down, we see that early kill going to allow Magic Majestic Eraser to pick up a giant spell. Pickaxe start actually coming in from from Blowfish here. Mm. So I guess going for the Tiamat early? Yep. Tiamat is really good in that top lane. Helps you clear out the waves quite quickly and he's probably going for a semi-split push uh, Renekton, getting the little bit of health regeneration you can get from that team and the lifesteal if you go for always for the ravenous hydra see so we're doing so much damage here in oh, the mid lane wow there's the ultimate coming out from knight able to pick up that kill siori quick quick kill coming there right when he hit level six it's all these champions that are like that like fizz we saw it, like in the first match we watched a fizz right when he hit level six you went right in same thing coming in here from talon Right when he hits that level 6, he's at that magic number where he's just doing so much and um, able to pick up that kill. We're actually seeing him roaming up to this top lane. Yeah, he's got that pickaxe and he's going to try and get up here. Slice is actually being used. He has got the dice. There's the dice. But the seismic shards come out as well. Look at this damage. Yeah, there's the Insalvo Force there as well. Who is the kill going to go to though? That is the question. We'll be giving over to Majestic Eraser. Picks it up. Another kill for him, gonna help him snowball. It's They're actually gonna bottom the lane, bot lane. coming in there, snail landed onto both. B0 is taking some damage, he's like exhausted, he's still going in. Ultimate came out from Sejuani, Valkyrie away from Kentis there, made in the bay, picks up the kill on the five point jabs. Kentis is like, will be going down. Barry does come out, flash away from Illusions. There is the Q from Kentis. Oh. And actually, wow, I mean, Q from in the bay, and he, he takes damage from that tower and goes down. But here comes Cassidy from the side. Can he get into here? He's gonna be going under that tower. Shorter Ace gets the health pick up the kill. Both of them go down. Shorter Ace repel up, but oh, the tower follows him. Illusions gets that credit for that kill. Yeah, not the best tanking of the turret there by Shorter Ace and Arch, Arch Rogod, just uh, at least tanking three shots when it really it looked like she was only going to tank two, she was just about in range, but we look at it, S S S H S S F H S are a little bit in the lead at the moment, about 1,300 gold, 1,200 now, and 
Jackson High School sort of recuperating. I mean, there's a couple of kills there onto the Malphite in the top lane, a couple of kills onto that talent. It was nice that Kessler managed to roam down and get a little bit of uh, extra gold for himself by getting that kill on the Ezreal, but they're still a little bit behind and they're really going to be trying to catch up for a, a while longer. We actually see Tiamat coming out here from Talon. Usually, see something like a Last Whisper is the first item or a Blood Test, and they're going to try and steal, uh, not a Blood Test, Black Cleaver, they're going to try and steal away this blue off right here. Yep, looks like they are going to be successful in that. They're actually hanging around in this brush, thinking if someone was going to be coming over, but actually, should the race is heading over there now, they might be able to catch him off. They're not going to be able to. Might see actual, actual god. Yes, they will. They run right into him. There's a knock up Rifflock over the wall to get out there. Very, very close to going down. That managed to get out. Nice to Rifflock away there. Yeah. Actual That's, god. Really, really yeah. scary situation to be in. It's the problem with playing against Cassin though, he does always have his Ripwalk and he can always escape. Yeah. That's why Talon's so good, because you can jump on him and silence him, which means that he can't Ripwalk away. Um, really interesting in that mid lane now that Talon is, he's about 20 odd CS ahead, got quite a bit of gold as well. He's uh, about 500 ahead and he's got 600 in the bank. So. Just a racer and illusion to in this mid lane. Looks like they're gonna be going for this game. Riff fuck away out of the unstoppable force there. Majestic Racer gonna lose that. And yep, as you were saying, the Riff Walk just able to get away from all types of situations. Meanwhile, bottom lane diving it onto Maiden in the bay. Kentus picks up that kill. Nice game coming get from Shorter Race right there. And this I think we'll start seeing the real strength of Corky soon. He's almost got that phase. He's got uh, two kills as well. They're gonna push down this mid lane. Uh, Siori and Illusions are going in for it, trying to get the tower down. That will really help the Talon run around, but they're actually going to go rotate down towards uh, Fried Pork Chops and Short A who are coming in here. Cocoon is up and they decide not to go in. Yeah, I think that was, you know, could have been a little risky if they decided to walk through that river area with that many people heading up here. Dragging this up, having a rounded, there's, no, there's not too much vision around it at all. There's pretty much no vision. So, more interesting there from the teams. 4 to 5 now in this game, 10 minutes in. Slight goalie, about 1,000 goalie right now for South uh, San Francisco High School. Mm -hmm. And they're actually, they're, they have so many penguins out on this map right now, they should probably really try to make use of it. They have been having, you know, Majestic Eraser, as well as Siori roam around in between those two lanes, but I think they really need to help out their bombing right now before Corky just kind of gets out of control. Just picked up his phage, picking up some boost of speed as well. Probably gonna be picking up another component for the tri Trinity Force. This is the amplifying tone from him. So very very standard Corky build, and it looks like they'll go ahead and set up on this uh, on this dragon. Yeah, I mean they know that they're across there because they do have this ward, and they've now placed that ward on the dragon as well. So they're gonna come across. Shadow Ace can always jump in. He's got that repel. He's got. The as well to try and lock up illusions. Here comes the repel out repel and oh, well, Zyrak. Yeah, so. away. Now Shorter A is gonna get taken out this Yori with that kill. Trying to get that still going was unable to and ended up dying for that one. So Dragon and a kill going over to South San Francisco High School. Illusions getting taken quite low in the mid lane as well. Just a nice riffle combination there. And we see talked about the split push for next and this is what he's going to do all day long he's going to come around farm the golems use that tiamat to clear out the wave between the two turrets and just try and deny malphite as much farm as possible and malphite has got a bit of lane clear but isn't really the best lane clear in the world especially when you've gone for something like that sunfire cape yes you can push a lane well but clearing it under your turret is not the easiest thing in the world yeah definitely something he has to be careful of his mid lane. Siori really just being aggressive right now on the Atrigard, as he should be. Atrigard definitely going for a little bit more of a late game cast and just pick the tier of the goddess as well as Catalyst of the Protector. So, really just uh, not wanting to go for engages at all. He's going for a little bit more defense, going a little bit more for his mana pool. Mm -hmm. Wants to just kind of build up some items to the late game because he kind of knows that he can't, he can't really trade with Siori right now. Siori with that TMR and the Brutalizer at the moment doing a lot of damage. Seeing nice strangle uh, grasp of Moots coming out there in the bot lane, managing to lock up a couple of people, but then as we talked about, like Corky is just ahead at the moment. Yes, Ezreal has that tier, is gonna be stacking that up. It takes about 20 minutes to get that fully stacked, usually on Ezreal. 
So we see Illusions coming in, there is a pink ward in the bush and he hasn't been spotted yet but it really depends on whether Five Pork Chops and Kentus decide to be aggressive here. They need to go in because otherwise they've got Crescendo, they've got both of their flashes, Valkyrie's up as well and they should just be able to escape away from this. Yes indeed. Illusions still hanging around here. Do -do. Dude. Really looking, I think they're just Dude. kind of looking for this opportunity, and there is the ultimate not going to answer anybody, however, if my poor shot's going to get locked up here, there is the true shot barrage on anybody either, Crescendo comes off, lands on two, string of throws, knocks up both people, there's a teleport coming in from behind, from Atro God here, jumping onto Illusions, Sayori is coming in, he's flashing in, going in for Kentus, bursting him down, V0 picks up that kill, and Atro God is stuck, trying to pick up Maid in the bay, will be able to rip fuck away, there's the E Atro by V0, Flash away from Atra God to get out. One yeah, I have, one trade in that I've bottom lane. No idea how Illusions managed to stay alive in that because literally escaped on about 50 HP, just tanked out the damage of the Rift Walk somehow, and Atra God sort of had to back away because otherwise he was going to die. We do see a Nectar Blowfish there taking that top turret, going to give that Global Gold cross down. towards his team, and Bot Turret has gone down here, well played by uh, San Francisco. Yep, one to one now is the score of the towers, and um, still there is still the kill lead as well as goalie for South San Francisco High School. They traded the support for the eighty carries, a little bit more worth for them, I think. Um, Buys coming off, mobility boots coming in here from uh, Zero. I really want to get that roam on. It looks like mm -hmm. it looks Hi. like a blood this or. Oh, actually, top lane chase coming off and stop a forest from Majestic Eraser. GG Blowfish popping the Dominus, but flash after by Majestic Eraser picks up that kill. And uh, 3 ne three zero now for this Malphite, really wrecking this top lane so far. Yeah, Blowfish just overestimated his damage. He can't fight a Malphite at the moment. Malphite's got that Sunfire Cape, it's going to be doing damage over time, and has pretty good base values on his abilities. Like, it's uh, AP scaling. Not the best, but his base values are pretty strong, so he's able to get a lot of damage out of the unstoppable force landing during a slice and dice managing to stop him up as well. And the ignite before Dominus meant that he didn't quite gain as much health as he usually would have done. Yep, so with this, okay, so with this, they're actually heading down to this bottom lane trying to get this King out CR with the mobility. He's jumping in onto Kentus, snail lands onto Kentus. Going down V0 with that Mystic Shot. Five Pork Chops is barely able to get out of the String of Thorns there. Gonna be able to go through that. Dragon's coming up in about a minute 30. And Five Pork Chops all taking the damage. Flash in by V0. Not quite able to pick up that kill. True Shot Barrage was not able to land there. He it's hasn't actually landed down. a True Shot Barrage yet. Missed both of the massive ones that he had there in team fights. And it looks like CO is actually gonna come into this mid lane. Here comes Majestic Eraser as well. Natural God taking the damage here. Looks like we'll be able to get out, but just barely. Really low. I mean, if they die, they could probably dive out onto him. They might just go ahead and take down this tower if they want to feel safe. Or, you know, mm. they'll just back off to feel even more safe. Even safer. If, you, if you're not yeah. near the towers, you can't be targeted by them. So, um, yeah, they didn't have Unsubble Force. They didn't have Flash. They didn't have uh, Shadow Assault either. So, really didn't want to go in there. And just, it's a bit of. It's a bit too risky, especially when you're uh, playing against Kessin, who does have Rift Walk and can just jump away quite easily. Um, as you said, Dragon's up in about 30 seconds, and that's going to be the next big fight here. Uh, I think we see that South San Francisco are ahead, but it will be quite easy for Jackson High School to get back into this game if they play their cards right. Yeah, no, well, Siori just Atri getting onto Atri God, doing the damage, trying to aces around, as well as. Blowfish, so uh, gonna force Yori back just a bit as they're saying a few people into this mid lane trying to get this pressure going for them, but so mm -hmm. far in this game, just have not been able to pick up quite a few kills here. And Yori, he does have this advantage about 47 CS as well. And he's really able to burst down Atra God, and his team is doing well as well, so might yeah. just be able to win out this game for them. Even though Town isn't the best scaling into late game, this bit. Dragon has started up here. Mm -hmm. That's going to be going over to the side of South San Francisco High School. Now they might be looking for five because DT Blowfish is caught by the stun here. Going in onto Domus's pop illusions. Has to flash away. 
Now they're playing on the defense. Sugar Thorns does come off the Majestic Eraser in the front line. Gets the Unstoppable Force onto quite a few people. Siori gets in there, picks up the kills. A double kill coming in for Siori. One kill for uh, a triple kill actually coming in for Siori. And the double kill for it. P0 right there, resulting in an ace and just huge fight coming in to re engage from that. The solid force and magic eraser just taking up everybody, hit the key targets, allowed Siori to get in there, really just mop that one up. Yeah, nice dragon falls as well, really isolating Sona away from the rest of the team. She had to use the crescendo on two full health people who weren't able to be dived on because, as you said, Majestic Eraser was in that back line using that unstoppable force and just really, really well played. Siori did well as well to jump in using that uh, Shadow Assault to get the damage down and knocking out those key targets. And we talked about this, like Siori was ahead and he's even further ahead now. 505, got a lot of gold, 3000 gold he's sitting on. And what's he going to spend that on? He gets the Last Whisper oh, straight wow. out. And yeah, just really. Oh, actually, just bought a Crystalline Flask as well. Oh, he, um, yeah, no, he always had that. Oh, Oh, okay, so I bought the movie crystal. I just saw the little animation of when he buys something, and I thought it was the crystalline flask. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah. He started with that crystalline flask there. Yeah, with that last whisper, gonna get a huge armor shred against the, the very little armor that's being built up here from mm -hmm. Jackson High School. You know, they have Seeker's Arm Guard on uh, Cass, and, you know, Chain Vest coming in from Necton, but they don't have, like, I'm not even sure. They just, there's just not a lot of armor at all. I mean, I don't know what else they built for armor because. Aegis doesn't give any more armor buff, right? Aegis uh, Aegis, now Aegis does it does give a a slight armor buff. It gives you twenty. Oh no, no it doesn't give. I mean, the aura oh, not the aura. aura yeah, armor. not the aura. No, yeah. you get health regeneration and magic resist. It, yeah. but it does give the owner twenty armor. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't even expect an Aegis to come out from Jackson just because there's no real AP burst that can come out mm. from South San Francisco. The burst is in the form of the AD cast of talent, so. I wouldn't even expect it from them, but I would expect, you know, maybe like Frozen Hearts, Randu and Zomans to come out for the yeah. tankies. Otherwise, I mean, Siori's just gonna get in there and blow people up, as we saw from that last fight. It looks like they're gonna try and do that again. All of their ultimates are up. Every summoner spell is up, apart from uh, Sejuani's Flash and an Exhaust and an Ignite. And on the other team, we see exactly the same. A couple of summoner spells down, but. Is this next fight is going to be massive, and if it works out exactly the way it did the last one, I could see South San Francisco actually just uh, pushing for the win, but it looks like they're going to go back towards Baron. They have this area really nicely watered, uh, should be able to clear it out, as Made in the Bay does have that Oracles on her as well. Yeah, this blue left is going to be taken as well, and they might just go ahead and go for this top tower, but they're really just looking at where they can pressure, where they can get lanes pushing. And I'm um, mm -hmm. trying to work their way around the map, picking up uh, you know, objectives and whatnot. So it looks like they might be baiting out this Baron now. They have it all warded up. They have an Oracle's Elixir. They know that Jackson High School doesn't know. There we go. Now, there are some question pings, yeah. Yep, here they go. They're heading over here. This could be monstrous. There's a double force. There's a Centuario 3 and a True Shot Barrage. There is a crescendo coming off, however Siori is just able to get into there. Picks up the first kill onto Elise. Kentis is over the wall, flash over the wall from Blowfish going for Siori now. Siori picks up the double kill though. And wow, the triple kill coming out so far. Meanwhile, Arch is chasing Atro Atro God. God. Yeah. yeah, but he's trying to get out of here, but trying to teleport out. However, V0 is right there to pick up that kill. And looks like now this is going to be the Baron coming in for South San Francisco High. Yeah. And they really just wrecked that team. But I mean, Sior, they had, it was a nice crescendo to stop it from, have, from like to stop the engage mm -hmm. from having too hard. But Sior wasn't caught in that. Then he just went straight for the team after that. Yeah, I, I feel a little down. bit sorry for Majestic Evasion in these fights because he keeps basically getting a perfect engage off and then just getting melted because he's the tank. He's the so he just man. dies. And then, like, he doesn't get Baron buff and he doesn't get to clear up the kills and stuff, but he's getting the assists, so he should be happy. Yeah, he's his ultimates have been really, really strong throughout this fight. Siori now 8 0 and 5. Black Cleaver finished up. Ravenous Hydra up so for him soon, probably. It's 1800 gold left right now in the VZO, and he should really probably, you know, finish up the Trinity Forest against the Mana Moon. He's just been sitting on that tier, the goddess, for pretty much this entire game. He bought mm -hmm. it 
on his first buy, and he's not filled up just yet. I mean, if he had Manny Moon, he probably would have been filled up by now, but obviously that's not too important for him. He's going to be going back. Let's see what he picks up. 1,900 gold to spend. He might just pick up boots, actually. I'm not even sure. Anyways, Trinity Force already finished up on Corky, however, these team fights obviously have not been going well for his team at all. The tanky front line is non existent. You know, Lee's trying to go tanky, but just hasn't found the gold to do anything. Renekton's 1 5 and 1, hasn't gotten any really any kills or assists. And he's been. Well, I'm sure he's totally caught out. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm getting really caught out. Two shot rush coming across. You might be able to just run around. Illusions is caught out here. They're chasing after him. This kill will be going down Kentus with that one, so two people going aggressive onto five people. Not the smartest idea there, I don't think. Yeah, really not. Like, it looked like they catch him out, he was backing away, but not able to do enough burst damage onto him without V0 there, Majestic Razor there to uh, CC them up. They're going to go around towards Dragon, should be able to get this one away for free. They're still around 11,000 gold in the lead, so although that was a bit of a mistake, it's not going to cost them too much. This dragon's gonna go down here. Very, very quick dragon. And, um, I mean, this game is just like for them to close out right now. They they do have their baron buffs. It's gonna be ticking down. And they're mm -hmm. actually heading bottom lane while the whole team of Jackson High School is over at mid lane. Now they're realizing that, you know, maybe a little bit too far pushed out. They want to defend their objectives. Yeah. So be chatting into a very big wood cover jungle here. Fire Push does does have this Oracle's elixir now, so we'll really clear out a lot of these wards, but so they're chatting in very, very dangerous water right now. And we we see them pushing down this bot lane, they should be able to get some damage down on the turret as well. And really, we just need to see another like superb engage going out here. All the ultimates are up again, as you said. I'd like to hit a few more people than it has been hitting. It's sort of being a bit meh thus far, they're going to push down on this turret, it's down to about uh, two thirds health, still not taking too low, Ezreal's got that Iceborne Gauntlet now, not going yes. for sort of the turret pushing Ezreal, going for more of a, a CC base Ezreal. Yeah, I guess the original blue build coming in for him here, and I'm not going for like Trinity Force, which is so strong now, mm -hmm. and you know, he's got I guess a little bit more kind potential, definitely more CC as well. It's, it's it is a nice build. I, uh, it is still a nice build, even with touch on Trinity forces. Dry Raj does come across. Not able to hit too many people. As the side still keeps getting poked lower and lower, but with this, there's a lot of damage coming off onto the side of South San Fan High, and you know, the Malphite's getting pretty low. Of course, he can regen quite a bit of it back, but you know, always yeah. have to be a little bit careful. But they're definitely chunking down this tower. He is the only one without that Baron buff, without the extra health that he you health regeneration you're oh, getting from get it. Oh, his engage! Does end the shorter ace? There is a glacial prison. Crescendo that comes across as well. There is the strength of Lords landing up onto three people. Illusions is forced out of the fight though. Five poor chops goes down to a majestic eraser. And so Horus actually able to finally pick up that uh, that bomb in attack. It did not go down. Now Kentus completely locked up. So Horus with that pill, with that kill. We'll be going down, however, to the tower shots. First death of the game, V0, however, does avenge him. And now Majestic Eraser is actually caught under this tower. Will be the pick up a kill onto Blowfish, but will go down a shorter ace. There's a 4 for 2 exchange there. Actually, 4 for. No, yeah, 4 for 2 illusions did not go down. 4 for 2 exchange in favor of South San Fran High School. However, they weren't really able to push anything after that. They did get that bottom tower. They get the goal, but they weren't able to advance beyond that, uh, beyond those, that tower kill. Yeah, I mean, they didn't get the tower, so it's going to give them a bit of global gold, and they can uh, push around towards this top tower as well, maybe get that down a little bit more, although we see short ways coming across, so two minutes on the Baron, expect to see that warded up pretty soon here by uh, Made in the Bay, and I think that's going to be one of the next objectives. We do see that Ravenous Hydra getting built out there on to Sahori, doing really well, did quite well in that team fight as well, first time he's actually died thus far, so done really well to uh, manage to stay alive, but uh, Cassidy is getting a little bit stronger, he's got that Rod of Ages, got that Seeker's Iron Guard, still got that uh, Tear of the Goddess, which is he, which he's still stacking up as well, so 
be interested to see how the next team fight uh, sort of develops because they engaged a little bit early there. I think they could have just taken the tower and kept their ultimates for an engage a couple of seconds later, but I'm sure they're a lot better coordinated than I am. So, <laughs> so uh, as you're picking up those cooldown boots as well, as uh, finishing up that man and of course, turns right into that mirror man because he did have the 750 stacks. Um, supports, we see Zara going for that Mikhail's Crucible. It's really good, of course, to help any target, especially your AD carry if they need some peel going out for them. Or they need some health, extra health. It's a really nice item, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Especially because, you know, other support items, or at least the lock has been built up as a Juani already. And, you know, they're just so ahead of the game right now. Black Cleaver finished up on Sahor and he's now going for another Brutalizer. It's like Yomomu is coming up next for him here. Yeah, um, I want to comment quickly on Majestic Eraser's build. Because what on earth is that build? Sunfire Cape, Thornmail. Yeah, kind of understandable. Armor's very good on Malphite. Thornmail. Hold on, Ash is diving on the Sahor here. Is he able to get out? And a huge knockup coming in there. Another knockup from the string of those Sahori. With the kill as well as one for V0, and then diving under this tower, double kill for V0. He's flashing in there, able to pick up the triple kill and the quadra kill, and a huge team fight for them. It was a great knockup coming in from Majestic Eraser, followed up by the String of Thorns, and that's actually going to be the surrender vote from Jackson High School, getting demolished in that team fight. Yeah, very well played there by uh, South San Francisco. Did really well. So he got. A little bit caught out, but they managed to turn it around. Majestic Eraser's ultimate came in and just such a good, unstoppable force managing to shut everyone down. We look at it, V0 hasn't even used True Shot Barrage. Wanted to get the uh, extra damage down from Mystic Shots and get those Iceborne Gauntlet sacks on as well. Really well played by them. Uh, we'll see them in the next game. Uh, they'll be on the blue side next time, though. So hopefully see you in a couple of seconds, guys.